You're not the attorney. Can you read the ordinance or the RCW? Yeah, 
Barbara's I not was the asking attorney. him to read the RCW out loud. That's all I'm asking. You said they have no authority. They do have okay. right. And he said as the RCW. Next step you find that that's twelve. Open file and Great. Could you read it out loud for us, please? No, the whole. You told the office to look that up. All the office. The motion has been carried. It needs to be noted in the minutes. Very good. For reasons of misfeasance and malfeasance, of which the charges will come with impeachment of the late day of the next meeting. That's it. His six months is up. <coughs> so it's up to you guys. So it's up to you guys. 
And then I'd like the part that says, Coach Barbara Pence was asked to stay by the mayor, please, because the council didn't ask her to stay. Anything else? Nope. Are we going to approve these? I should say that the council did not approve Oh, I make a motion to approve the special meeting. Second. <laughs> motion to approve the executive meeting minutes. That's been made and seconded. Moving on. Nope. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. So I need to make an approval of the April 9th, 2024 regular meeting minutes. Okay. Um, I have a question. Laura was absent, is all it says. Was this um, an excused absence or? Laura? No. You weren't here for last meeting. <laughs> it was voted on by the council. Yes, we, we don't know anything. Okay. Personally? Oh, I have uh, something to Oh, okay. Good stuff. So I make a motion that we excuse. Sorry. Or do you... I believe that was excused. Uh, I don't remember voting. <coughs> well, I say. Okay. Okay, so the motion to accept the minutes. No, mm -hmm. we we're just talking about a change to correct it to say that she had an excused absence, and that will be the minutes. Okay. Excused. And uh, item D down at the bottom. All that's necessary for the resolution is the number, not the part that's in parentheses. Please remove the part in parentheses. You guys good? Make a motion to accept the regular meeting minutes. Second. As corrected. Oh, sorry. As corrected. Yeah. Okay. The motion has been made to approve the regular meeting minutes. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 I like everybody's in favor. Moving on. Uh, unfinished business. Um, Jamie is now at the top of the list. Okay. Um, I wanted to address a letter that I received in the drop box at Town Hall. Um, it was a continuation from our discussions at the end of the meeting last time. And um, we have some folks that apparently are watching on TV and don't want to come and just ask the questions. So um, the question is, with your resolution to the reallocation of funds and creating new line items in the budget for those funds, did you bother to consult with Town Hall, the treasurer, to see if there was anything in the current budget that needed an extra boost of funds or did you even look at the budget to see if any of the existing line items can use some extra money? Of course I looked at a budget. <laughs> I went through two different budgets that I've received and I found that, well first off, I guess I need to explain to folks that don't know, but in the fall the mayor comes up with a budget. It's called the mayor's budget. And that's the time where the mayor puts together where she thinks she needs funds and what items she needs and what items she thinks aren't as important and she balances around those totals. So it is the mayor's budget and that is what the mayor put out to the council and approved it. That's what she thought she needed to have in there. So there's no asking about a budget, a budget that she created so it's obviously what she wanted. Um, and of course I looked and I looked at lots of different line items. I went through the entire budget several times. Um, let's see, what was the other part of the question? Oh, you mentioned that the vehicle reserve fund had not received any money last year. Did you check as to why? No, because it's the mayor's budget. If she felt that she needed money in other places, that's where she put it. You also mentioned that the water and sewer funds have been receiving money at the end of the previous years to help them. Yes, they have. 
They transferred 80000 into water at the end of the year. Or C, if they could use some help this year. No, it's the mayor's budget. She set it up the way that she thought she needed it. What about some extra money for the training of the clerk that you recommended that she receive? What is in her budget? The clerk's training budget is $1,500. And could it be used some or maybe for the mayor? Um, the mayor has given herself $500 for training in her line item. Plus, she has $3,000 in administrative expense line that she can go to to pay for any kind of a training or a conference that she wishes to go to. That's also accessible. Okay. Why do you feel the need to create a new line item instead of just helping the existing budget? The reason that I chose to do what I did is because there's no training money available for the town council. The town council needs to be able to go and represent our town. They also need to get the education on the things that they find interesting, the things that they're confused about. It's important for the people sitting at this table to understand what their job is. So that's why I put it there. Um, I put line items, sorry. Okay, last year when I attended meetings, Laura was asked to pull the kids and find out what kind of playground equipment they wanted. I was quite surprised when I asked the mayor if she had some kind of a grant possibility that she was looking at because this was done a year ago and just last week she told me no. I thought that it would be good to have $4,000 in there because even with a grant sometimes you have a little bit of money that needs to come out of the town budget for something unseen, unforeseen. So that's why it's there. I also said whatever was left over from the other line items that were addressed to be used to pay for the audit. Okay. I put it in four different areas. I felt that they were appropriate. The uh, Something that most people don't know is that a vehicle reserve fund, you're supposed to base that on your most, your most, um, what's the term? <coughs> the vehicle that means the most to your town. And that would be a backhoe in this town. It always has been the backhoe. And $18,000 isn't going to get a backhoe. So that's why I suggested to put it in for that. Because you never know when that backhoe is going to go completely crazy, and you might as well have money in the funds. We have been putting it in there every year. Um, the mayor stated that some years that she had and had. So that's why it went there. Um, this person said to please thank those recording and posting the meetings online. This comes from a group of concerned citizens. Also, there is $500 in the water fund for training, $1,100 in the sewer fund for training, travel, and meals. So there are some training funds for our employees. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Moving on down the agenda, um, Jim Dorshak. Yes, sir. Uh, subject is interruptions. The town council provides as part of the governing body for the town of Lynn. At the town council meeting, April 9th, 2024, there was an interruption in the town council proceedings. Therefore, I'm inquiring of each council member if you have a solution concerning these interruptions of the town council meetings. Mr. Duke, you have a solution. The reason I like our answer is you know, people have a right to talk, you know, some of them talk out of line. You know, you're allowed four minutes basically and that's the end of it. Okay. Mr. Bull, same question. Well, I think uh, I understand everybody's got something to say, but it's always been as long as I've been here, that's the reason we have, why we have a, a sign up sheet at the end of the meeting. Absolutely the interruptions are not on the sign up sheet. See, you just interrupt. You just <laughs> <laughs> but no, as far as that's because it, it, we all know it's gotten crazy in here before, especially when I first came on to the council. It was really bad with people just chiming in and 
a lot of the arguments and stuff back and forth and meetings drug on forever and we, we don't need that so to me those the time you put your name down and you talk when it's your turn to talk at the end of the day. What about the person that does not put their name down when they talk? Well, in a, the procedure is our conversation. Well, that's that. We don't, we just do our best to eliminate that. And not allow that. Maybe. Um, interruptions, they happen. We're all human beings, and sometimes interruptions happen when people feel that something is being misstated or, or not the truth. A lot of times, interruptions happen like making weird noises while someone that you don't like is talking, which is really rude or annoying. Um, interruptions are supposed to be addressed by the person who is running the meeting. That would be the mayor. The mayor is supposed to handle this. She is the person running the meetings. Okay. Uh, Laura? Um, I mean, I feel like everyone has a right to speak, um, but I feel like if it does get disruptive, I feel like there should be a two warnings, and on the third warning, we can't come in here anymore. Okay. And there's going to be I get the feeling that you're aiming your anger or your question at this council. When I have sat in the past as a person of the audience and listened to the exchanges that have gone on between people at the council and so forth. So I really, I don't have an answer for you because I've witnessed it when you were on the board and when Myra was on the board. And it's something that's just going to happen. I, you know, everybody has their opinion. Everybody has their emotions. So, you know, I, I just don't think it's right for you to direct that at this council. Okay. Uh, number one, this is not a my uh, getting back to the council. Okay. Uh, House Bill thirteen twenty nine, section seven, in the revised code of Washington. Number 42.30.050 does provide a solution for these interruptions. As you, the council members, are aware, <coughs> having taken your oath of office, you are required to uphold RCWs, ordinances, and proper resolutions. <coughs> okay. Moving on. Reallocation of funds, ordinance 2403 and 2404. Ordinance 2403 is an ordinance eliminating the code enforcement wage and benefits line in the 2024 budget. It's actually been voted on in the past. This is just the formal draft of the ordinance by the office. That noted. Okay. Okay. So, motion's been made and seconded to accept ordinance 2403. Okay, 2404, an 
ordinance amending the 2024 budget of the town of Lynn, Washington as adopted in ordinance 2308. This amendment is to reallocate funds due to council approval of elimination of the code enforcement position by ordinance 2403. Be it ordained by the town of Lynn, town council, Adams County, Washington, as follows. Whereas the Lynn Town Council voted to eliminate the code enforcement position on February 27, 2024. Whereas the Lynn Town Council voted to reallocate code enforcement wages and benefits on March 12, 2024. Whereas certain changes needed to be made to the 2024 budget as listed below, and whereas the Town of Lynn Council held a public hearing on <coughs> day of 2020. Now thereof, <coughs> huh? therefore, oh, therefore, sorry. <laughs> therefore, the town council of the town of Lynn does ordain as follows. Section one purpose. This ordinance is to, ordinance is enacted to attend the 2024 budget to include a re reallocation of funds as detailed in section two. Section two, the 2024 budget shall be amended as follows. Um, you can just say it. Huh? You can just say it as follows. As follows. Um, so the uh, first one, zero, zero, 001, code enforcement wages. Um, 2024 budget was $17,200. The amendment is minus $14,000.86. 2024 amended budget is $3,199.14. <clears throat> Code enforcement benefits, 2024 budget were $1,800. Amendment, $1,503. 64 cents. Amended budget, $296.36. Council meeting rent, $0 2024 budget. Um, amendment, $1,400. And 2024 amendment, amendment budget is $1,400. Council training, $0 in 2024 budget, $6,000. Is the amendment and 2024 amendment budget is six thousand. Playground equipment is zero. The 2024 budget amendment four thousand dollars. The 2024 amendment budget is four thousand. Like Audit charges. Um, citizen review fees. The 2024 budget. Was ten thousand dollars. The amendment was one hundred and four fifty, and the twenty twenty four amendment budget is uh, ten thousand one hundred and four dollars and fifty cents. And I'm not quite sure what this uh, the fourteen sixty fifty five right after the <coughs> citizen for oh that must be what we've spent. Yeah, so I wish for that to be stricken. That has no place in here. Okay. Okay, uh, vehicle purchase, 2024 budget, 13500 amendment, $4,000, 2024 amendment budget, $17,500. Uh, and other funds is, oh, um, $2,350,500. Was the 2024 budget amendment zero? The 2024 amendment budget is two million three hundred fifty thousand five hundred sixty-five dollars and forty-five cents. So therefore, the 2024 total budget for was two million three hundred ninety-three thousand sixty-five dollars and forty-five cents, and that's the same 
the amendment budget is two million three hundred ninety three thousand sixty five dollars and forty five cents. The um, section three, this ordinance shall take effect and be in full force five days after publication. It passed. Make a motion to strike the citizen referral part. You should only say <coughs> audit charges. Second. Okay, there's been a motion made and seconded to strike the citizen referral audit charge. All the other charges line. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Passes. Make a motion to accept the ordinance 2404. We have to have a public hearing before we can pass the ordinance. Not to adjust the budget. Yeah. To, have a, to have a budget amendment, there has to be a, budget, a public hearing. By you have to have a public hearing. hearing before you make your budget for the rest for the next year. We've already ex the previous council already accepted the budget. We are just making an amendment everything, in the funds. Everything I found said that um, a public hearing was needed. They're not changing the bottom line at all. They're just realigning the inside. But we're moving funds out of current expense into a new fund line, into a vehicle. Did You're you call a public hearing when you moved the, the uh, COVID funds out of the water line into the COVID item? Denise, no. I'm not speaking to you. I'm speaking to the Well, council. you're not doing And I spoke with the RSC and the town attorney, and a public hearing was needed to do a budget amendment because we're transferring funds out of current expense, which changes the bottom line of current expense into vehicle purchase, which is a different fund. If it was all within current expense, then it wouldn't matter. But because we're transferring into a different fund line item. Well, I think we've had needed. three or four public hearings discussing this very thing in all of our posted meetings. But a public, not a public hearing, no. We've had council meetings, but yeah. nothing as a public hearing. I think it's just what you saw. I apologize. I'm just letting you know what has been stated by MRSC and by the town attorney. Sorry, I have no trust. Well, MRSC doesn't say that because I looked it up tonight. Okay, and we have different um, information. The council MRSC. already voted to have proof when you guys talk to the attorney. So the attorney needs to send an email if that's correct. I have it, and it's confidential information. And why didn't you present it to council? It's confidential information. It, it is not. Should we present it to the council? So, <laughs> council, you can ignore what she says and go ahead. We can schedule a public call. hearing on May 14th before the next council meeting. <coughs> council, I would just vote and ignore her. What are they going to do to you? We've got six council members. They can take my advice if they can take yours. Are you a legal person? Are you? I'm just telling you what the legal has said. Anyways, let's figure this crap out. Let's go. Second. Make a motion to So the motion's been made and seconded to accept ordinance 2404. Uh, all in favor? All right. All right. Anybody opposed? Nope. Okay. Ordinance passes. Okay. The next item on the agenda is the airport insurance. I didn't see anything in my packet about the pricing or what all is included in um, terrorism insurance. It was like $149. <coughs> yeah. Because at the last meeting, it was brought up about if we wanted to add terrorism <coughs> to our insurance. Yeah. So what, you what do you want to pay? Does somebody have a paperwork that states what it is? If I may interject, I sent an email 
to all council members individually. And I said, council member, this is the airport terrorism policy information that you requested from last evening. Remember that terrorism coverage has not been purchased before. From the information given to you at last meeting, which was that fine print, uh, without purchasing uh, terrorism coverage, it was said that it was $1,979. <laughs> If elected to purchase terrorism coverage, it'd be equaling to an additional $140. Any incident will be have to be certified to be an act of terrorism by the uh, Secretary of Treasury. So it's just not automatic. <coughs> Limits of in, uh, insurance, bodily injury and per property damage Liability each occurrence limit is $1 million. Fire damage limit, any one fire, $50,000. Medical expense limit, any one person, $3,000. And I said, let me know what you think, Paula. Uh, London, or sorry, Robert called and he expressed a note that it was, no, that it was not needed. Uh, Mike emailed. Uh, for only that much more, I say we get it, and Kim re responded with thanks. No response from Laura, no response from Jamie. For $140, I think it's a worthy item to have the amount of terrorism acts and the things that are going on in our world, unfortunately. It I figured it would be quite a bit more. So $140 to protect what we have at the airport and people. I think it would be worthwhile. Anybody else wish to speak to it? Oh, I'd rate, I mean, 140 bucks. It's probably a wise thing to invest in. I make a motion that we um, purchase the additional terrorism coverage for the airport insurance. Second. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded to purchase the extra terrorism insurance at the airport. All in favor? No, I. Aye. Any opposed? Yep. Of course. <laughs> Six one. Can I say something? That means I have to loft the airport every day. Our lives. That place is going to be locked. Says who? Says, Did you read something, or well, was yeah. that not shared with us? The TSA, the TSA says that place needs to be locked. So we have to lock it every day. So whoever is running out of there has to have the keys to get in and out, and has to be locked when they leave. That is what that says. And we have, we get to which is not a big deal. Right. right. Except for people that don't fly out of there but own buildings mm -hmm. and get mad because they can't get in there because I have the gate locked. Right. Well, that's just like us. Mm -hmm. We all kept it going. And, uh, exactly. I, I, I know. <laughs> but okay. I, I will keep gate lock from now on if that's what you guys want. Okay. You know, is the fire department going to have a key to that? that, that yes. If there's a fire? Absolutely. Okay. They always have a key to that. <coughs> and you will open it for council members when they go up to work You're on not it? authorized personnel. <laughs> yeah. This is what I've been told. Yes, I know what I've been told. That's what we've been told. <laughs> I told. Not the mayor. She said it to us. No. I open it for people who have keys and have the property up there. Yeah, well, it's a problem the, that the town council isn't allowed on any of the town property. If you're on the airport committee, yeah, I have a yeah. job for that. How do you do your job without access? Beyond my degree. <laughs> 
That's oh. beyond my pay grade. I, Thank you, Steve, for letting us know about oh, the yeah. Thanks for the. I will lock it. I will lock it, and I will keep it locked. Okay. Okay, so that's it for unfinished business on the list. Um, new business. <clears throat> um, Corey Seidel, Mobile Clinic. E. C. We misspelled it. It's okay. It's just a misspelling. Oh. <laughs> All right. Just going by one of them. Um, I would like to petition the council to consider uh, an investment through a grant that East Adams Rural Healthcare has to improve the location uh, by, I don't know what the name is, the city park that we park our mobile at. Uh, we have more funds available to us for mobile outreach and we can provide a mini grant through that process to assign it to government entities or, or other appropriate uh, uh, folks designated by, by uh, that fund. So what we'd like to do is propose uh, some concrete work there, so a nice even level pad for us to park. Um, uh, one of those tubular Shelters that's one inside with a roof to keep us out of the sun and most of the wind, um, as well as a meter hooked up to utility, <coughs> electrical utility at that site, if that site's still applicable uh, to the city, and then uh, work out that arrangement. But that money would be uh, grant, so gifted to the city. We would not own that, it would be city infrastructure. So, um, don't have to make that decision tonight, but uh, we, we are down the last couple months, month and a half of our grant funding period, so we would like to move that along. So if not tonight, as soon as possible. Um, appreciate that, that answer. Um, questions about that? And if it's not a good site yet still, I'm uh, happy to entertain where, where else that would be. Questions. So that's directly out. across from the town shop, right? I don't know that answer. There's a garage right yeah, it's there. On, <laughs> it's, on, it's, on, okay. it's on the east side of the park where the bathrooms are. Oh, okay. so on the east side where they want to put their concrete pad in. I've talked to them and yes, I'm all for it myself because it's just. Uh, it's, it's sounds like a good thing. Good thing for the town. It's a great thing. And I just want to mean. I don't want to detract from it, but I mean, it's your infrastructure, so. And it's grant money, and it doesn't cost the town anything, and at well, the end of the day. If the wind blows like or set over, though, I'm not saying we wouldn't try to figure out how to help you, but it is, it would be yours. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, it still benefits the town. Yeah, yeah, we're, it's, you know, it's not ours. I mean, other people want to park there, you got equipment or whatever, we're only there, you know, every so often anyway, so. Uh, but we were trying to, you know, prolong the life of that unit, and it's basically, you know, an RV with fiberglass and it, yeah. it's sunshine and all that is not great for it. So. Uh, and you would only be using it when you're in town. Right. Yeah. So does the council want to address that tonight, or do you want to wait till the next meeting? Uh, it's kind of a push thing. But. Do you have any plans or? Anything I, drawn up? Right I was there. trying to get those from my facility guy, who I think probably met with you know, I met yeah. with him. My guy Todd. It's uh, you know, it's like a it's roughly like a fifteen or twenty by eighty foot pad, and similarly side, not quite as long as shelter. Shelter is probably forty feet, maybe. Yeah, um, just enough to cover the unit while sitting there and then electrical work. I have two questions. So would the town be paying for the electricity? I know it's not much, but for when you're using it? Absolutely. No, that's, no. that's why I want the meter hookup. No. It, that would be... So we have to the just charge meter. them directly. The so point. how are you going to keep it? somebody else from plugging into it? Well, I, I've heard lots of stories. What goes on down here? So I'm, not, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, it would be a lockout. Yeah. It would be a lockout. Here's what I would say is, is we desire to do absolutely all the right things that's appropriate for the community. Um, however that works with your infrastructure, we will abide by and pay for and, and do those things. Um, so I don't necessarily know. Todd was digging into a bunch of this stuff, so uh, he's not here to represent. So I don't want to speak for him, but... Um, I will say that as the CEO of the organization, we will absolutely make sure that things are, are right. So, um, 
And at that point, probably really uh, some sort of infrastructure usage agreement, right? Um, yeah. That we'd like to have so that, that we don't have to argue about that in the future. So. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Will we accept the proposal? A second. There's been a motion to uh, accept the proposal for the uh, mobile clinic pad down by the park. All in favor? All right. All right. Anybody opposed? All right. Yeah. And who, who would you like me to work through that? With? I mean, day to day building stuff. I'm on building and planning. Building planning. <coughs> and then one quick last announcement. Sure. We'll be here Thursday from <laughs> 1 to 4. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, I selfishly uh, coerce anyone in the audience come visit us. Um, we do have pretty small volumes, and that's, that was one of the presentations I made early on is, is I mean, uh, we're a public entity, too. And so I can't, I can't keep bringing expensive thing down here for them to use. So I know we all have healthcare preferences. I'm not trying to skirt that at all. Uh, but if, if you're currently traveling to Ritzville or you don't have care, or uh, please give us a try because I'd like to keep it busy. So all insurances? We take pretty much everything. Okay. And if we don't have it, we're willing to see if we can sign up because there are a few little stragglers at onesies, twosies. Medicare? Are up there. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now, are you guys going to on site? Um, I just wonder if you're going to be here, like, like people can count on you every other Thursday or every other, or is I it just going to be random all the time? We we want to, but uh, we lost a couple of providers, so we're in a little okay. bit of a pickle right okay. now because we have small medical staff. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're recruiting, and that could happen in the future. You know, we least typically have between four and six full time medical staff, and so you know, we pull one of those to come to mobile sites. And so, if like right now we're down to three, that makes it, makes it tough. Yeah. So, I just um, thought maybe if people got it in their head that oh, they're here every other Thursday. Yeah. You know. My clinic manager who who comes here with me usually uh, she knows that message clearly. Okay. Uh, but yeah, yeah uh, we want consistency for you. Always totally understand. It's easier to get off work and do all those things and, and expect and rely on. <laughs> and we want to do that for everybody. It's just been a little bit. This mobile clinic, as we said early on, is, is new to us and, and trying to get that ingrained in what we do and staff to staff it and all those things. So um, we've learned a lot of things, but we're, we're getting there. So, not a crystal clear answer, no, but it's okay. It's That's not perfect yet. Yep. So this is more for just information for everybody. I do know that if you have an appointment on the day that the mobile clinic will be in town, they'll reschedule you to have your appointment at the mobile clinic instead of going all the way to Ritzel. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, if you schedule it. Yeah. Yeah. So if you have an appointment you. already scheduled and they're in town, then you can swap over to the mobile clinic. Yeah, just ask for the mobile clinic. We'll, well, we'll reschedule that for sure. Perfect. Scott's got a question for you. Over here. What are the times that you're going to be? Uh, 1 to 4 this Thursday. What's that? 1 to 4. 1 to 4? Yeah. And that's you're going to try for every Thursday? or We've been trying, to, well, we were trying every week, but we didn't get hardly anybody. So uh, it's been either once a month or every other. Yeah. And it's on, uh, we routinely put it on Facebook. So if, if anybody follows Facebook, uh, follows these datums, uh, we put a splash out there all the time. And we try to catch, you know, newspapers and stuff, but that's not quite as reliable as uh, obviously flipping it on Facebook quick. Facebook is probably better. It's one of the most reliable at this point. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank just, you so much. I was just going to ask oh. about the agreement. Are you going to draw up the agreement, or was council going to draw up the agreement? I think since we have council on retainer, I'm happy to draft it and have you all review it. Good. That'd be great. If that sounds okay. Good. good. And just so everyone understands, this is a grant money, right? Yep. So city's not out. This does not cost the town nothing. A few minutes here. And is that this is all it costs us? That they will come in, put down the pad, they will do it all, and it's all being cleared. It's all being yeah. We'll pull permits. We'll I've, I've, I've got to tell us what your permits. I've already been. <laughs> I've already been part of the permit fully. And yes, it's all free. It doesn't cost us nothing to have them here. 
Yeah, and it really doesn't cost us anything either. It's all great. No, it's <laughs> 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 actually a really good thing to have competition and to have them here. Oh, yeah. <coughs> well, we just want to bring good care to you. The world. We're working on building that, so. Yeah. Well, we appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Yep. Thank, Thank you. So appreciate it. Okay. Um, I'll be in a new business uh, building permit for 108, 108, sorry, East 2nd Street. Make a motion we accept. Uh, whatever. Second that. <laughs> okay. Motion to be made and seconded to accept the building permit. Can I say something? Yes, you can. Yeah. It's been delayed for two weeks because somebody forgot to put it on last council. <coughs> um, is there any way to push this up faster? I mean, I got a contractor sitting there waiting to come in here. It's all done. We, we're going to vote on it right now. Well, I know you are, but then I got the county to work with too. But uh, they called me today, questioned me a few things, and uh, I think they're okay with it. So I'm just wondering if. I can tell them to go ahead. Yeah, as long as they can the count on, you know, as long as they count for it, it should be good to go. Okay. I'll move calling. <laughs> Somebody make a motion? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded to accept the building okay. permit for 108 East Second Street. All in favor? All right. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, it's accepted. Start build. Okay. Well, you got to pay first. It's all right. All right. He should give you the council information. Here is the zoning for commercial property. Take one. But I don't know if you want to or not. Might not be good for you. Filter to be installed. 
which protects the pump motor from premature wear. Use of well seven should be minimized until the filter is delivered and installed. And he's got in parentheses, estimated delivery time is 10 weeks. As previously discussed, getting well seven back online will give the town a second source and relieve some of the strain on well eight. But a new long-term source is still needed. Last fall, we applied to the Department of Health for a loan, <coughs> sorry, low interest state revolving fund loan. Lynn made the list and Department of Health has sent out an initial <coughs> scope of work outline for a total of $1,740,000 for a new well 10. Okay. As this offer is all loan money, we are continuing to look for other additional grant funding to offset the loan amount. Most likely, the final funding package, package will include some grant and some loan. Okay, so that's, that leads into, now you're well 10. Okay. In your packets, you've got DWSRF program to talk. Oh, right here. Okay. okay. You all should have that. I know it irritates you, Robert, but you're going to have to listen. Construction loan contract information. This is the application. Scope of work project to include. Submit project report and construction drawings to the Eastern Regional Office for review and approval. Submit approval letter. Submit bid documents to the uh, Eastern Re Regional Office to re for review and uh, approval. Submit approval letter. Complete your SEPA, all the publications. Complete cultural and historical uh, review process. <coughs> Drill, pump test, and water quality test, new well 10, and equip new well with pump, motor, piping, valves, flow meter, electrical, and uh, telemetry systems. Construct a well house and site security. <coughs> Install approximately X feet, we don't know, of transmission main from the new well to the existing water system and then submit a water shortage response plan to Eastern Regional Office for review and approval. In addition to costs of construction, costs may include, but are not limited to, engineering, design, construction inspection, hydrogeologic uh, assessment, permits, the public involvement, preparation of bid documents, <coughs> fees, taxes, legal, administrative and audits and then the uh, next pages is uh, broken down by category the next page is the project funding still one million seven hundred forty thousand and then the uh, last page is for the signatures for the uh, engineer okay with that I received a phone call, and I believe that, I'm not quite sure, do you have a Town of Land Wealth 10 um, email message? I can't remember if I gave it. I don't recall it. No, right now. Oh. Pink, is it pink? Is there a second pink? Should say town of Lynn, well, Jan. Uh, but I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. I failed to get that. Okay. 
Okay, as you can see, this is from the Department of Health, <coughs> Mayor Bell. Um, I asked him to email and give me some uh, short sweets. This is the verbiage that appears in our contracts and a little information on your required rate increase. I hope this helps you going forward and feel free to reach out. This information came from the underwriter, Mike Copeland. The next um, paragraph is uh, directly from our contracts. The borrower will maintain reserves at a minimum as required by the water system plan or small water system management plan. Borrower, that's us, will timely adopt rate increases and or capital assessments for the system services to provide significant funds along with other revenues of the system to pay all operating expenses and debt repayments during the time of the loan. And this is where um, I had to ask him twice what he said uh, because he said, if you go for this loan, if, if this well 10, get that in the process for the next 40 years, whatever it is. Um, would the council, would the, um, uh, in the process of always increasing your rates to cover your, your uh, loans? How he came up with the $28 or so increase in rates is a simple formula. Take the annual payments that this would generate and divide by the number of connections and you get the amount needed <coughs> to maintain where you are currently. And we have, I believe, 322 connections. Would that be $28 a year because it's an annual payment? He just said $30, or I rounded up to $30. Increase your rates. So a rate would be, right now it's $63, right, for water? That sounds to me like it would be a monthly increase. Okay. We, we've got the money, we don't want them. You can you we are always applying does not mean that we get what we apply for. Well, so no, that no, is no, always no, my no, answer. No, I'm no, sorry no. I am talking. If I have the chance to do any grant money application, it is there. That is the foremost of any project of anybody's mind. I don't care who you are. I can and, you have, you have and you have this that actually came through and actually was awarded with all the other state you know entities that were applying for it. So that's that's for the land. Okay, if you were listening, Dan said that we have um, uh, continuing to look for any additional grant funding as we go through. So you've got many, many years to keep going through for grants and, and uh, applying for this. The important thing that you have to realize for the town of land is a new well pretty much is needed because is our well seven going to be enough to do our mm, uh, requirements for our town? Right now, you have had well seven down. You balk at conserving on well eight to keep it running. Okay, just pretend. Well, eight dies next week. We don't have well seven. We're almost there, but we do not have well seven. 
Well, eight is running, and it has been. Some days it's been limping along. And we, we need to think, and we as a town, it's not me, we as a town need to think of our future for water supply. Okay? The water supply is going to be harder and harder and harder to get, find, uh, finance. So th this is already on the books if you take it. So this is already on the books. Um, how long do we have to accept it or to start to use the funds? They usually have a time frame. This is for the application of um, for the actual contract. Okay. So if the way I understand it, you guys will okay it. Then this document gets sent to um, what's that last page? Application um, first engineer first certification. First what is it? Ten thousand or so for Century West to fill out that paperwork? It's just first in line. No. Twenty thousand. How much is it? There's no numbers on any of this yet. It's just um, Dennis Hewitt, Department of Health, and this Mike Copeland said, "You have this." One point seven million dollar acceptance. We have to accept it. This loan, we have to accept it. If we accept it, then this right here needs to be the first step of submitting. I guess the go ahead. So if, let me get this straight for the the school pump that we put in about seven. What we learned at the meetings previous <coughs> that could last up to two years, right? The crystal ball. Three hundred fifty, four hundred thousand, was it? So, and I mean, if it's going to last two years, we could be assured, which we can't. That would give us two years to apply for a grant. Okay. Okay. Right. Know, right now. Rather than jumping in. Put the target in more debt, put the people's more up. That seems to be going up an awful lot to be paid. Twenty-eight dollars is a lot of money to some people. Yes, anybody. Yeah. But the thing is, is every year you are increasing your rates anyway to help pay for the previous forty years of, of uh, loans that you've got. Yeah. That you not, that you wouldn't mean. have a, a sewer plant. You wouldn't have the other uh, wells that are been done. Well, you realize that that's not good. And this and that. Yeah, but what I'm saying is with that loan, that's going to put $28. Uh, that whether was... Whether it be monthly or whatever, you know, which I would like say is probably going to be monthly anyway. It was to... That was the question that was presented to me. I am now presenting it to the council of the town of land. Well, thank you and you have this information. I do not know if there is a date that is connected with this right away. It was stated. Could you have give me a feeling back of um, the council's you know thoughts uh, by the end of the month? Um, you have thought process. You have well seven that is in the process of being completed. It is not giving you the, and I don't remember the gallons, but the the hundred what? Yes, sir. Three hundred gallons a minute. Am I three 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 hundred? Three hundred. That's great. That's good. Yeah. You should run about three fifty four. You should run a thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Well, seven ran a thousand gallons a minute. Oh, yeah. what about the yeah. And now it's we're we're putting a submersible in that's going to run three hundred gallons a minute. How Which many feet are they putting that in that? How we many feet do you recall? Uh, it's eight nine hundred feet. 
No, I'm saying where are they putting this submersible pump? The old one was 50 feet from the bottom. Do you oh, know yeah. how deep they're putting this one? Well, they added another 100 feet of liner to put it, because they can't put the submersible the same place they did the other pump. So it's going to be higher, so we will not be able to use the last however many feet. So that's what I was wondering, where they're putting it. Yeah. Because whatever's below it, we can't use. We'll never be able to use it. Well, it's, it's a band-aid on a big problem. So. <laughs> And the last thing we paid for was supposed to last 25 years, just FYI. Yeah, and now we're and doing it. And it lasted six. And we're doing it again. Right. You got a question over there? Yeah. Uh, I just no wonder how many estimates, water. how many different companies were asked to come and give an estimate on different wells and what would be to repair or to make new wells? Was it just one company, or was there was there some shopping around you? I thought we had a couple different, two or three budget, different ones that made yeah. on the three, well, seven project that's going I, on. I did now. irrigation for many, many years. Grew up rewind electrical motors with my dad. Did it for 26 years. Did a lot of these huge farms out here that they're they're up at 1,500 to 2,000 gallons a minute. And for almost $2 million for a well, seems a bit ridiculous to me. Seems like our town is being taken. Seems like we need to do some shopping around and find out what really we can get it for. Because in my opinion, no. there's no reason for a, a town well of our size that we couldn't get it done for less than a half a million dollars. No, the, the loan, the it's, application is the 1.7 million. That's what supposedly we did. Well. For a well. For a well. I'm just telling you right now, yeah. that is extremely high. Okay, but you are being taken. It's a municipal well. Okay. It's not a domestic well. You're getting a loan for one point. That should be able to build four wells. No. Okay, I, that part I don't know. This is just the loan that we have the capability of you. There are no bids out yet because we don't have the everything. Right, it's just the, the, the it's just first step. Uh, first okay. the first step. We don't have an uh, estimate to see what it would cost to get a loan that matches that. Not go four times as much. Actually, a grant would be the best way to go. But you're asking for way more than what is necessary, and I'm wondering where is that money going? Because it ain't going into one well. It's going into somebody's pocket. Ninety percent of this. Ninety percent of it goes to Century West for their design and everything else. Ninety. Well, maybe not ninety. Seventy percent of all projects go to the engineering company. That's true. And the rest, a little bit goes to construction, and then the rest is for actual okay, this pieces sheet, of the well. This, excuse me. This sheet says construction and an estimated um, $1,311,030. Uh, DOE, review, <coughs> and the approval fees. I'm just picking different things out. Uh, $1,070.28. Sales tax, one hundred fifteen thousand nine hundred two. Um, there's an audit involved. There's public involvement. There's uh, the engineering bid, the bidding documents. So yes, it the whole bucket is one million seven hundred forty dollars. Out of that, it's going to be everybody, you know, taking their their whatever uh, desires. I don't but think the, the engineering. To connect to our water system. Yeah, we, we have to make it work with our existing system. If we have this uh, drawings, submit project report, construction drawings need to be re reviewed. Um, the drilling, the testing, the equipment, the well house, it says here, security. Do you All have of that to build another in. reservoir. Oh yeah, and then you got two reservoirs. But that's what, Mr. Mike, it was 
uh, well tan information for. Okay. Um, if you want to uh, have uh, like another step of information other than what they've already given me from the Department of Health, we can get that for you. Okay. Can we have our town engineer come in and answer some questions and talk to us about all this and why he didn't apply for grants previously? He has applied for grants. You guys didn't apply for the USDA 100% grant for Well 7. So you don't apply for grants. We don't understand. We just we apply, apply for grants. grants. So that does mean that we have the recipients of that grant. Um, if you have questions, yeah. okay, we can drop jot them down, get them to Dan. No, I'd like to, to have the man here. Yes. We pay him and he can answer questions. But as we're in the excuse me, can I just the stop mentioning something? Polar is no longer mayor for stop. But so I let's am get a bit down to the pro term mayor to sort this out. He doesn't know the information, so I am giving it to you. I could keep my mouth shut, and you wouldn't have this information. Okay. If Jamie, if you have questions, what I'm saying is, you could give him a heads notice so that he would have those answers and not, you know, be blindsided at. Well, here, here's my question. Oh, here, here's my question. Sometimes he has to have document research so that he can give you the good answers that you require. Okay, well, maybe you will know this answer. Um, is any of this a forgivable loan? You know how they have the problem? They'll give you a loan, but they'll say 25% is forgivable, which is acts like a grant. Do you read any of that in there? I don't, that's why I'm asking. Okay, I don't know if they're going to put that in there at that time when this is going. Sometimes it comes after the fact, right? It has come after the fact. Well, oh, we by the way, more of a percentage of a grant than we expected. Right. Um, you know, it could be 25%, it could be 5%. Is that a possibility with this loan? I truly don't know. I truly don't know. I have a question for council. How many grants have you guys approved applications for? I haven't. So how are they here. applying for grants if you guys haven't approved the process to be applied for? That's just a question. You don't have to answer it. I would say it's not happening. I'd say you're wrong. How are you applying for things council hasn't approved, Paula? You apply. No, they approve the application. You have, when you get it, well, then you the get stage. the approval. No, she's lying. They didn't apply for anything. I don't know. Okay. okay, that's the stuff that we asked to not happen, please. I have some questions. Did I understand you to say that as the, if we, got this loan that as the years progress we can apply for grants to pay it off to pay it off the way i understand this rate how this reads as this try back up lynn made the list okay department of health <coughs> sent out an initial scope of work outline for the total of $1.7 million for the new well 10. As this offer is all loan money, we are continuing to work for other additional grant funding to offset the loan amount. Most likely, the final funding package will include some grant and some loan. Okay. And what is, what is the interest rate you're looking at yet? And the term? And the monthly payment? That part I wouldn't know. Um, and I don't remember seeing that. 
3.5 is um, what's coming down the pipe. You can get it re, um, what is it, refinanced on a quarterly basis. And I'm taking this off of the sewer plan information um, and knock off a couple of uh, percentages there. And this doesn't say anything about it. How long is it long for? Um, most of them are up to 40 years. We can do 20 years. We can do most of the time it's 40 to keep the payments the, the low. Oh, yeah. okay. The term of this loan will be based on an engineer's certification of the expected useful life of improvements. So that's, that's your answer as stated below for or 20 years, whichever is less. If the jurisdiction prefers the term of its loan to be less than either 20 years or the useful life of the improvements, the preferred loan term shall be indicated here. And then it's got a blank years. Okay, thank you. And that is, that's on your last page. I think that the council really needs to have our engineer here to explain all of this. Some of this was done last year, um, and to bring us all up to speed and to understand what it is that we're doing with the $1.7 million loan. And it would just be nice to be able to ask those questions and have all the information come from our engineer who's in charge of the budget. One move that we table any decision until next meeting. Second. Motion has been made to uh, table the well 10 loan application <coughs> made and seconded to table the well 10 loan application until the next meeting. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right. We table until the next meeting. <coughs> Uh, well, there's uh, <coughs> so we'll be moving on to the mayor's report. Yeah, uh, it's been quite an interesting meeting. Uh, yeah, <laughs> anything to say, boss? <coughs> oh, yeah, that comes, that comes after the. After the, after the, uh, <coughs> Mike, do you want some more information? Yeah, as far as um, the well 10 stuff goes like that and stuff like that, I, I think that we need more information for sure on that. Um, I realize it's just the first step, and I think everybody needs to realize that we haven't taken out a loan or anything like that. It's just the application <coughs> process, and we don't even know what the, the set amount would be. Um, you know, so we need to we need to think about that too. That it's not we're not applying for a million seven hundred forty thousand dollars loan today. Or next week is just the first step to see where we would basically be at and where we're going to end up with it. Um, well, if we make a list, we qualify for the loan. Which is a good, that's a good thing that we made the list. Yeah, I mean, because we're going to have to figure out something for the future of this town as far as water goes and stuff like that. So anybody that's been here any amount of time can see that writing on the wall with that. Um, so yeah, it's definitely something that needs to be addressed soon. <laughs> I really am kind of at a loss for, for words a little bit as far as some other things that have happened at this meeting, but uh, um, yeah, that's my mayor's report for this meeting. Thank you. Would you like to have some more information? More information? Sure. Um, 
for the public, for the town of land, the dump is open. Council, you have a flyer in your folders. Should have. Information is posted on town hall window and the community board. We ask people to abide by the yard waste only and to unload to the southern end of the area. Okay. As well as stay on the road, not in the field. And it is posted. Jamie asked me to post it. So I was going to ask, so is it going to be like before? Do you guys have like a different cable lock system on there now, Steve? Or no, it's, it just, it's just the same cable. Well, it's a different cable because someone took the last one. Right, it's right. It's a cable. But I mean, same process, but we come out keep there, your asses on the we road. Will under, we, will, we will open it. We will escort you down there. You dump at the southern end, and then you come out, and you stay on the road. Yeah, because if people I, don't do it, it's going to end up losing it. Randy's not playing games. No. He said one more chance. That's what he told me. I believe it. I know. Yeah. He is said sage, one more chance. Is the sage been trimmed along the roadways? Not yet, but I have laid gravel, and I'm getting there. It's hard to do. It's one, a process. It, it is a process for me to be in one place at all times. But yes, I will cut it down. It has been cut down by people that have went out there. They cut it themselves. Yeah, this is a free dump. This is a free dump. It, I'm not. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to pay for the road for you guys. It, but it, it, I don't have the time. I don't have the. No, I don't know. the equipment. No, I'm not. I went and laid gravel. I did. I'm just glad that we can actually start using it. Yes, and stuff. That's a, it that's took a, big, a lot. A big for plus. Me. It took a lot for me to convince Randy to let me open that up and let the town use it again because he was not happy about his CRP about being drove across. And I, I held, I held fertilizer to him for a lot of years. And that's why I have a good rapport with him because I work for Bouchery and, and I was like, I need to get this stuff off the back roads. I need to get it off the sides. I, we need to open this up. And he, he get one more chance. That's what he said. He goes, post it from the beginning to the end. And I did. I posted. There are signs from the beginning of the road all the way to the end where you go down the hill. I post the sign to stay off the CRP. And yep. Stephen and Pete did a really good job burning it and cleaning it up and um, making it nice for, for everyone. I tried. Place. So the process is whoever wants to dump anything has to go to town hall and then you get called <coughs> and you escort them out. Yes. Because okay. I cannot have any more dimensional lumber out there, <coughs> toilets, mattresses. I can only imagine what he found out there. <laughs> it, it was horrible, but I cleaned it up the best I could. I have two flat tires on the back of right now. I have cracked all the way through the inside. They don't even want to pass it for me. But it is open. So Thank you. It is open. That's good news. <laughs> and it is usable. And I will do my due diligence to keep it open for you people. I I love the fact that you dump for everybody because I use it myself. And it was, it was a it, it's on me not being able to haul my stuff out there. Right. But we we gotta respect Ramy. Mm -hmm. And also my um, yes. A reminder at the shop April 27th is this Saturday 8 o'clock until the truck is full free dump day oh that's right right I do okay oh just I'm sorry. um I heard that there is a list 
that we could put on her um, Chris Olsen <laughs> to come pick up. Uh, it already started. Anybody in the community can contact him. Or do I just contact him? Or Are is, is, that a is that for appliances? Is mm -hmm. that what you're yeah. talking about? Oh, yeah. okay, good deal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. No fridge is a free free. Yes, no, she but it's a problem. It's a dryer. It's a dryer. <laughs> There's no refrigerator. It's just a dryer. Okay, I just I was just I was wondering. All right. Thank you, Amy. Yes. If you do have a refrigerator that is dropped at the dump, then that'll be a ten dollar charge. Right. So just cut the line before you take it down. Um, okay. okay. Is there I got something anything else, else I'm missing? Yes. Okay. If I may. Yeah. Um, recently, Casey Monge and Joe Pasuti with Terry Costello with the Department of Ecology supervising the removal of the biosolids from the pit area at the wastewater treatment plant. Bartek hauled off four loads approximately 100 tons at $65 per ton earlier this uh, in March. Um, now we have been working with Terry for the best way to dispose of the liner, all under very strict requirements. Currently, the liner is still at the wastewater treatment plant, and Terry, here's the kicker, uh, Terry Costello must be present at all operations for this process to be a okay with the Department of Ecology. For me, to remove the design. Okay. <laughs> no, she's actually the she's the head of ecology. Okay. Biosolid. No, it's not. It was never permitted in the first place. No, no. So how are we going to get rid of it? Uh, we have to keep it inside. Remember when it goes up the pipe and comes down? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I pressed twice. The whole place is full. Uh, now, inside the concrete? Yes. And I am at the point where I have get our ecology box so I can build a ramp so when bar check pulls in I can get high enough to dump in the trailers. Yeah, that's what we used to do, yeah. I don't know where the ramp went. <laughs> but where did it go? Yeah, we never saw it. No. I, I don't it know where the ramp went, went but yeah. now I gotta, there was no ramp. I gotta build a near the ramp. It was <laughs> No, Joe says there was a ramp too. Was so a ramp, yeah. No one knows where it went. <coughs> But now I gotta build another one <coughs> so I can load their semis without breaking the trailers. Because the backhoe doesn't go high enough to reach into right. the trailers. So how often are we gonna have to have them come in? Okay, uh, all these questions if oh, every Steven, two weeks. Stephen, let me pass this out for them to have a visual. For, for now, until I catch up, because the plant is so far behind, because I have nowhere to put it. That's good. It's good. Okay, coming your way. Get a picture of what Stephen is describing. Nice. Trust me. Ecology is not care. They just say, deal with it. She's a lot of fun to deal with, let me tell you. <laughs> okay, so. But I. Jamie, do you have a picture yet? Okay. I have to do this. And we have to budget for it. At least $12,000 a month. $12,000 a month? Yeah. To get rid of the biosolids. 12000 a month. Okay. It's, it's seventy dollars. It's seventy dollars a ton to get rid of it. Yeah, I believe yeah. And it's five hours for them to be charged because they're going to charge you five hours: two here, two back, an hour to unload. 
Okay, some of your questions will be answered by this. <coughs> it is not going to be cheap. I'm not sure how Odessa does it. I don't think it's costing any the same amount. They have a different way of doing it in their bags. Yeah, they bag it. They bag it. I don't know if that's something that we don't have, but I have talked to those to guys. Identical. Our I, plants are identical, so we might be able to add something. I have been talking to them, and I'm like, well, how do you 40 pound bags? I was like, I can't. Like, there's no way I can do that. Have you gone up there to look at how there's mm -hmm. Okay, if I may interrupt. Um, current issue. Come down here. To it. The current issue, current emergency. We need a plan for disposing of the pressed biosolids and future pressing. The picture that you see is just one pressing. We are looking at a trailer that we can load and haul to Bartek ourselves. Current research is coming up with a used tandem, no, they're new, new tandem dump tra uh, trailers, and this is off of Craigslist, okay, uh, are running 9,200 to 9,600, the two that we were looking at. We anticipate using the 2014 Chevy pickup, which is a class two, and they can uh, it can haul up to 10,000 pounds, it says. Truly, I don't know how much that it can safely pull. It's never pulled that much. But of course, the bigger the trailer, the bigger the truck is gonna be needed. Okay, so with the second sheet that you've got there, I hand it out. The listing. Uh, where is it? And I believe that you have the purple sheets also in your folders. I'm going to refer back to that. Um, the funding opportunities for Lynn's short-term biosolids management solution. And this is from Century West. His name is Lynn Bramble and then Dan Rimmick is doing the researching. Um, I'm reading off of a white sheet, Jane. Did she get stopped? Okay. Um, this is your list of the possibilities. Washington Department of Ecology, Water Quality Program, you see A, B, and C. You've got SRF fundings. I'm not going to read everything. You've got emergency loans. Possible recommendation for C is to contact Public Works Board. Also, there's a possibility of uh, researching there, Washington Department of Ecology. And this is from the Terry Costello um, Solid Waste Management lady. There are no fundings coming from her <coughs> area. Now, the purple sheets. Okay, those are uh, with USDA Rural Development, uh, and the person that's in charge of that now is Rick Rose. And he thinks that uh, land would be a good possibility, a good fit for the Community Facilities Loan Grant Program. <clears throat> Um, there is no grant money or dollars available for this funding cycle, but plenty of loan. If processed today, it would be 3.5%. Can change quarterly, and the next potential changing would be in July. Terms is the useful life of the facility 
and can go up to 40 years, probable 5 to 10 on equipment. So that's where I was reading off that other part for the well. Um, another possibility is, uh, or opportunity I should say, Washington Department of Commerce, Public Works Board, and that is loans and grants for the infrastructure projects. And Lynn may be a good fit for small communities initiative program. So that was thrown out there. So in this, um, exchange back and forth between uh, all the agencies. To summarize what we know thus far, short-term funding <coughs> for a watertight dump body trailer. A, the more likely funding options may be low interest loans from either USDA, RD, or the Public Works Board. But we haven't heard anything yet from Public Works. Okay. Um, another long-term B, item B, funding is for a design and construction of a covered drying bed sized to store at least one year of accumulated biosolids. And the wish would be uh, storage for two years worth. That would be ideal. And he's got here, A, this option should likely be an SRF through the Washington Department of Ecology Water Quality Program. And I asked why we are talking with Water Quality Program with biosolids, and he just kind of laughed, and it was tied in together because um, water, sewer, makes it go together there. We should consider getting an application in for this upon opening for the applications in August, this August. Okay. Um, Question. Who would join the lower? Chuck. Me. You got Hazel? Yes. Oh, cool. I have CDL that has man. This is what we need to do. It's me. And he has a CDL as well. So I think we're covered on that part. If I am included in the week. Um, but anyway, council, this is an emergency foremost plan that needs to happen yesterday in order to get rid of our um, biosolids that uh, Stephen has not pressed in two weeks? No, One week. It's been almost two weeks. Friday will be two weeks. Okay, and that's not good for the plant. That's not good for the tanks. Um, but that picture, I wanted you to know that that picture was just one pressing. And 8,000 gallons at a time. There you go. We all poop a lot. <laughs> yeah. And it has to go somewhere. Wait, sure, right? If we have a way to get rid of the biosolids, the amount I press a week will go down. I'm just so far behind now that ecology has done this. It's going to take me weeks to catch up to get it down to where I can press 5,000. I get London knows what I'm talking about. Yet. They're still coming out like a soldier. Yeah. But it's not. But it's so far behind right now. No. I, I, I'm 8,000 gallons at a time at least a week. And we have tried to uh, find options, tanks. Um, we've talked with uh, CDSI on doing Nobody their, wants and, to do and that. <laughs> the, the, the new waste uh, management land out there by Washtucna. 
Um, it's, it's just a dead end street no matter where you go. But with the possibility of getting the correct trailer, the correct equipment to have us take it to Bartek. Bartek is the company that will take it for sure. Us taking it to the fish trap. Yeah, they're at fish trap there. Yeah, they're at fish trap. So we are going all the way to fish trap to get rid of it. Yeah. And their rate is sixty five dollars. A ton. ton. And they're hauling hours. Let's see, they had 18 hours of hauling fee. It's $165 an hour. Two trucks. Yeah, four trips. A hundred tons of shit is hauled out of here. Somebody's going to be launched. Which ain't my fault. So the um, uh, Casey is wanting um, how many ecology blocks? Eight. Eight, eight uh, ecology blocks to be purchased like right away, so that we can get a, well, built, a ramp built. Get a ramp built, so that Bartek can come and get while we are trying to find a good deal on the trailer situation so that we can ultimately haul our own. So I don't know where council wants to sit with that. If you want to approve um, more research, getting that taken care of. And I don't necessarily have to build a ramp. I can dig a channel that they can pull into and I can pull up above them. Whatever, whichever way you guys want to go with it. Is Dan really familiar with all this? Oh yeah. Can we please have him at the next meeting? What the? I have. <laughs> What's up, Mike? I was going to say what. I wonder what it would cost <coughs> for like a loader, a rent, a rental loader. I haven't checked on that in a long time. But I know they're not cheap, but um, that way you wouldn't have to mess with built. You know what I mean? I know you can rent it by the day or by the week. The only other thing is, is, I have to go through an eight-hour class with them to run their equipment. So if you ever tried to rent that crap before, because I tried to rent a dozer to clean up the dump, and they were like, yeah, we'll put you through an eight-hour class. No, I've rented escalators before and never had to go through a class. Yeah, no. I was told by was oh. like, and they were like, no, you better go through the class first. Oh, wow. So we gave DJ to come do it. And they look at Brad before we had the cabin. <laughs> that, that would work. I think that would have gotten us like 300 and something a day plus to leave. I was just curious if that could be an option too. Yeah. It's all going on. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's, all, it's all nice. Yeah. But you know, my biggest problem right now is that I can't press because I have no way to put it. Right. And we need <coughs> to get on this big media argument. And they wouldn't let us use the, the pit's area. Gone. I tore it apart. You did tear it apart. They made me tear it apart. God, they could have given us all the time. It was never permitted. That's what they told me. It's never permitted, Stephen. Get it out of here. I was like, okay, I'm not. I, I'll tear it out. Okay. Now, my whole my whole view on what ecology is doing is, it's they just tied our hands behind our backs and said, deal with it. So Steve, is it cheaper for you to dig the hole for the truck than to build a platform? Sounds like that would be faster and easier. Um, to put up a ramp, the ecology blocks are 50 bucks a piece. So it's actually easier for me to build a ramp because I can use the truck to dump dirt and 
I can do it that way. The, the tr tractors we have are not built to dig okay. a ramp. So it's cheaper to do the, the ecology blocks yes, and you need uh, to eight of them? Yeah, I do. Yeah. So that's 400 bucks. Yeah. And then I just got to haul gravel with the dump truck and do it. So you want council to approve 400 bucks tonight? Would be the best thing for us? No. Not for tonight. I, 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 well, it's either tonight or in two weeks. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, approve me. <laughs> approve a college block for me. <laughs> and I, I, I'll build a ramp. Does the council want to? Make a motion on that or at least getting some ecology blocks or something so we can get some shit moving. I mean, stuff moving. <laughs> literally, shit moving. Um, from the server plant. You said it was $400? 400 bucks. You're like 50 bucks a piece for ecology blocks that I probably need one, two, three, four, eight of them. Yeah. Um, I move that we get going so that you have a way to get rid of the poop. <laughs> um, final make, thoughts. Yeah, make a motion that we buy the ecology blocks. Second that. Okay, a motion's been made and seconded by the council to buy ecology blocks so we can get the sewer plant. Question. Uh, so, are you guys going to have to pay for freight in with the ecology blocks, or is somebody going to go get them? What's oh, we're going to have to pay freight. We have no way to go get them. <coughs> yeah, so... We have no way to go get them. That's, that's what I'm saying. So, we got to factor in, yeah, they're 50 bucks a piece, but what are they going to cost for freight to come to? Uh, freight's not cheap. Not sure. About that. It, it depends on what plant you're getting ecology blocks from. I, I always got our ecology blocks from the county when DJ was getting his, so he'd just throw mine on his truck too, but he is not getting any anymore, so I don't know what yeah. the phrase It was just a thought that would Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's a good thought because I, I have no idea what it's going to cost to haul it. <laughs> Normally about twenty five a month. Yeah, three dollars a mile because you're paying for diesel, so yeah. So a couple hundred bucks for freight, maybe? Oh yeah, it's gonna be oh, a few hundred. Where do you get this from? Not sure yet, because DJ always got it from. So I so you just don't know where. Yeah, I have to call DJ and ask him where he gets them from, and then I'll call them. So unfortunately, it sounds like my table. <coughs> well, you can have a special meeting to the guys so that you can get it done before the next one. Yeah. There is a motion in the second motion. You want to rescind your motion? Yeah, I'll rescind. I'll rescind. Yeah, you will. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Uh, as soon as you can get us some information, let one of us know. Tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. yeah that would be great. Tomorrow, I'll like.